All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Humans of LinkedIn. I'm John Welch, uh, co-founder and president of SkyMount Studios. And with me today is uh, Matthew Tyner. Matt and I got connected on LinkedIn. I'm not actually sure how. I think either I saw his stuff or he saw mine or something like that. But right. uh, that's how it usually goes these days. And uh, Matt said he'd be up for coming on the show. I'm super excited because Matt is more in the consumer marketing space. And so I kind of want to get some, uh, you know, get a finger on the pulse of what's going on there, especially with all the weird new changes everybody's got going on. So Matt, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, John, Matt Tyner, uh, right now I'm the director of marketing uh, with Williams Comfort Air, Mr. Plumber here in Indianapolis. Uh, we've also got locations in Cincinnati and Louisville. Uh, my entire background, oddly enough, uh, went to Butler University uh, right here in Indy and right out of college, went to the HVAC industry. I would never have guessed that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Heating and cooling is not always a sexy industry, right? And right. It's, you know, fast is so much cooler to say. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's a fantastic industry. You get to work with amazing people, uh, people that are really down to earth. You get to help people build their businesses, help their families, help their employees, um, you know, grow their wealth, everything of that nature. And, uh, it's just a beautiful, uh, beautiful space to be in. Uh, my background is B2C. I've worked on e-commerce at HVAC.com. I've worked for a distributor selling two contractors, which was more B2B. Uh, and then I've worked for a series of um, HVAC and plumbing and electrical contractors, as well as uh, vice president of marketing for a marketing agency here in uh, Indianapolis uh, in my previous my uh, previous job. So have a, have a lot of diverse uh, industry knowledge, I guess. Uh, yeah. But B2C, man, it's just so much fun. You're connecting with people all day. Uh, you're right. helping the community. It's just, it's an amazing, it's amazing thing. Yeah, that's super cool. I mean, I've noticed one of the reasons I want to have Matt on the show is because I could tell from the way he was talking on LinkedIn with some of his posts that he actually gets it. And he's also actually getting results, which I think is more than, <laughs> more than to. most that's people why they pay say. me. <laughs> yeah, well, they, but you don't understand it. In the B2B world, that's not a, re a prerequisite. Everyone's right. so bad at getting leads that you just have to sound like you know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, right. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's got its own list of challenges. Right. But um, anyway, yeah. So, uh, so what's going on? Like, I know that I see a lot of stuff with the contact list delivery or the con like the, you know, all that stuff. Like, how are things changing in the in your world? And how can companies who are B2C like what should they be focusing on in terms of getting their marketing going with this new, you know, normal we're in right now? Right. So it's it's been interesting. So in March, uh, we made a decision as a company. Right. We saw COVID coming. We saw the the growth that was happening in the, in the numbers, and we made the decision. Like, listen, we don't we don't want to be a part of the problem. We want to be a part of the solution. And, and so, with that being said, we decided to pause. A, an entire segment of our business, the maintenance side of things. So uh, think about it, your preventative maintenance, all that that fun fun stuff. It, it's not a necessity. Um, it's needed for your system to operate properly, uh, but it's something that we could catch up in the summer after the numbers were more normalized, right? And, and uh, that flattening of the curve happened. So uh, for, for a couple of months, we decided not to do maintenance. It was a hit to the business, uh, obviously, um, but you know what? Um, it had to be done. We just felt like that was right. And, and where I'm going with that is with the changes that have happened, you just have to keep in mind your client, right? Who are you serving? This is B2C or B2B. Who are you serving? What appeals to them? How can you help them? Number one, how can you make sure you put them in a, a better position to be uh, healthy and in our, our world, healthy and comfortable in, in their home, right? And so, it's getting back to basics. I know as odd as that sounds, like everyone probably thinks like, oh, you know, it's it's a tough time. So you need to be really creative with your marketing. You don't have to be creative. You have to be genuine. Uh, right. And you just have to make sure that, that you are, are approaching things from a genuine perspective because consumers can tell. Um, and so like this year, we've mapped out our, our entire community involvement, uh, what organizations we're partnering with, that excess money that we have to sponsor baseball teams. Uh, you know, be able to invest in the youth of our communities uh, because they're, they're the next level of, of, uh, of leaders, right? We, right. we want to make sure we're, we're getting them on the, the best uh, foot forward. Um, but like our community involvement has probably had a bigger impact on some of our marketing than anything uh, because it came at a time when uh, people were in need, right? And we were in a position like the HVAC industry has actually done fairly well. Uh, through this overall. When you look at some of the other industries that have been impacted, restaurants, 
um, the hospitality industry, right? They've just been hammered with this. Right. Uh, and so we, we took it as our kind of uh, community responsibility, like our corporate, that, that corporate identity, that responsibility that we have from a corporate perspective uh, to be able to help, help the communities that we serve. So um, with that being said, you know, we really put an emphasis on that. And we knew like we're an intent based business, right? No one wants to really have their HVAC system repaired or replaced. Like it's not the cool thing where you're gonna, it's not like getting a new car, you go show your neighbors this or that. It's like, hey, come check out my new heating and cooling system. That's not that's not the coolest thing in the world. Um, right, right. But, but with that, there's still that <laughs> demand. We've got to garner that, right? So I'm going right. to be in the places where, where people go right. to when they need their heating and cooling uh, repaired or replaced. But then on right. the other side, during this time when people are at home is a perfect time to build your top of mind awareness right right so we made some switches you've got a captive audience right you've got a captive <laughs> audience these people are at home all the time and they're they're bored and so they're going to be finding different things to do so like one thing we immediately did um you know tv buying as an example right well first radio like radio people aren't driving to work so we probably need to adjust some of our radio and actually decrease some of our spend on radio buys uh, because that captive audience is not there, right? right? But we do know there are specific types of people still going to work. The people that are um, considered essential, right. they typically work shifts, right? Your, your emergency responders, your healthcare workers, uh, people that work in the grocery store, your truck drivers, everyone, they're still out there. So you have to adjust your buying. Uh, schedules to be able to to encompass that group uh, but like tv like we we moved some of our spin that is more in the evenings because people typically they're they get home they want to unwind they'll watch jeopardy wheel of fortune whatever right and on your paid programming uh and that's a way to unwind well if people are at home in the evenings they want to go outside because they're right. tired of sitting in their house Right. Um, so we actually had to adjust some of our spending to be earlier in the day. And right. uh, this may seem weird, but like parents now have all their kids at home and they've got to entertain them. We're probably going to play some of our commercials on children programming now right? Uh, because that's going to be playing in the background. Right. And, and it's just things like that. You just got to think of how your, how your client is absorbing information and top of mind awareness was huge for us because like I said, we'll gather the intent. We've got so many things, whether it be, PPC, um, you know, lead generation, SEO, whatever. We've got all these different um, things out there, these tactics out there to be able to acquire them. We found this was a great time to build our top of mind awareness and through community involvement so that it was it was truly genuine what we were doing for the community. And, and it gave our team a real good feel good of what they're also doing and investing in the community through this. Um, that it just turned out to be a really, really successful uh, commingling of, of, of tactics in a well-defined strategy um, yeah. because where most people forget is like they think oh hey we just need to do these tactics and it's just going to work it will work to a point don't get me wrong but you have to realize the customer journey and what that is and you've got to make sure you have things to capture different customers in different ways uh, depending on where they're at in that customer journey and and that was just that was just huge for us and and this time has really given us as a marketing team even uh, time to think uh, and, and really create a strategy that's going to propel us into the future, which is totally cool to do. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, it was so funny to me the minute that this all hit back in March, like within, you know, two weeks, every single email that is going out from anybody is like, well, with COVID, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, guys, come on. <laughs> like right, how long? I right. how long? And then like that went, that went up for like eight weeks. I was like, can you, can you guys stop? Like, hammering that drum it was just like everybody was, jumped on that immediately it was so it was so annoying so annoying i i can't tell you how many people i unsubscribed from because of that me um, too but you know it, it's you got to take a different approach to it yeah it's cool to be able to say you're doing this or that but that shouldn't be your only message to the client right. so like like when we closed maintenance we had this entire workforce right that that uh, didn't have maintenance calls to run. So what do we do? We offered up to the community that we deliver groceries to people that are high risk. We deliver groceries to uh, first responders uh, when they order through like click list or, or curbside pickups or any of those, we would go pick it up and deliver it to them. Uh, we'd wear our gloves. We'd do the hand sanitizers, masks, all that stuff to be able to make sure we kept them safe. But we figured like some of these people didn't need to be going to the grocery store. That's putting themselves at risk and that's not needed. We got a team that can helpfully 
that can help uh, those folks be able to, to stay at home, hunker down and, and maintain their safety. And, and it just happened to be at the end of that, we said, if you happen to need service, here's right. what we're doing to make sure that you and our team is safe right. uh, so that, that we can make sure, you know, everyone's, everyone's on a, on a, on a good level. And that's, that's really what uh, I wish I saw more of like how, you know, how are you going to intertwine that message with something more meaningful right. and more powerful? Because when I looked at it, we originally looked at doing, sending out an email like that. I'm like, this just doesn't feel right. Like who wants to know if their HVAC company is, is taking measures to keep them safe. If they, if they don't need us, right. right. If they need us, everyone wants to know, are you guys wearing masks? Are you guys wearing your shoe booties? Are you guys uh, wearing gloves? Do you have your hand sanitizer with you? Um, are you, you know, disinfecting the equipment that you're working on afterwards? Yes. We're doing that, but also check out what we're also doing because we want to serve you because you're part of the community that has so graciously supported us over all these years. This is our turn to be able to give back. Yeah, that's brilliant. I love that. I love that focus on just what can you do? I mean, that's exactly what we talk about pretty much constantly just in our own content for Sky Mouse is just like, just what are you giving away? Like, stop thinking so much about like, what kind of service can someone buy from you? And rather like, just what can I do? I mean, right. I think it's amazing to me how many how many people you have where like they don't think about their like that's so brilliant to turn your staff into um, into like you know, to, to just find something else for them to do with their time. Right. Like right. I've I've been trying to tell from a B2C perspective, I don't know, I get your thoughts on this. Like I tell mechanics because I actually have weirdly had several mechanics ask me, like, what can I do? And like something I've been telling them is like. What if you started fixing something for free every time someone brought you something like they bring your car in, you you create their list. But like, I'm sure most of the time when somebody brings a car in, there's like one or two things that it's like are obviously like a little you, you just got to tighten something down or like something was loose. And right. It's like that becomes a line item on your on your, you know, whatever it's called, your diet diagnosis right. sheet or whatever. But imagine if you handed the diagnosis sheet back to everybody that came in and said, here's what needs to be done. I did these two for you already, right? Like just those things where you've already got yeah. your guys standing around in the garage. You're not, it's not costing you anything to just do a little bit extra, you know, with whatever staff you already and, have, you know. And tell them about it, right? I, it just, just putting it on that log means one thing, but actually telling them about what you've done is another. Right. That's something that, um, you know, we've always as a company, I've been here about a year and a half now, um, we've always as a company had a lot of community giving. Uh, it's always been uh, ingrained in the culture, uh, but we never really told anyone about it and celebrated those stories. And, and it's not from a perspective of, um, you know, oh man, we, 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 we just want to brag about this, right? That's, the, that's not a genuine, that's not serv true servanthood. Uh, what it is, is telling the story, celebrating the people helping, telling more people that you can help them so that you can give more. Uh, but most importantly, like if you're if you're partnering with a charity or something of that nature, you're doing them a disservice if you're not telling people that you're partnering with them. Right. Uh, because what you're able to do then is spread the message. So when we have a specific partner um, that we're part like uh, this, what this coming month, we're doing a seventy five hundred dollar donor match uh, specifically here in Indianapolis. Uh, the organization is Outreach Indiana. And what we're doing is and we, we purposely set it up as a match all the time because then that allows us that incentivizes us to tell the story because that means we're going to be able to give more right. uh, you know at the end of the day from that program they should be getting fifteen thousand dollars seventy five hundred donated our seventy five hundred match and and tell people about it because these organizations and these people need their story told and no one you know they only have a limited um, amount of resources to be able to tell the story utilize what you have as a company that following that you have on social media, your email list to help th help them tell that story. And uh, that's, just, you know, it's, it's not being disingenuous. It, it's actually right. serving them better. Right. And, and that's what we just have to keep in mind, but you sure as hell better, better approach it from a genuine perspective. Because at that point, if you don't, people are going to see through it and you're just going to seem phony. And that's, that's stupid. Right. Well, it has to, <laughs> that's stupid, right? I mean, it has to be something that you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. Like no one minds if you say, Hey guys, we need to tell you about this thing because we right. need you to know that we're matching 7,500 bucks. Nobody sits there and they're like, Oh, William, you guys, that's just a stunt. It's like, no, it's going to cost us more money. If you donate more, totally. like it totally. actually costs us more money to do this. So it can't be that it's in your self-interest because right. it's hurt. It's technically hurting you, right? Like right. that's what, but you, but you have to do it that way. It has to have cost you something in order for you to right. tell people about it. Otherwise 
it is disingenuous, right? That's just like the definition of it. So, you know, you're talking about being proactive, basically, and I, I like that. So, like, I know that there's a lot of companies right now that are probably scared, and you guys probably were, too, when this all hit, right? So, like, what's that look like to, like, tackle this instead of react to it, right? Because I feel like most companies are just, like, hoping to get through this, and they're not going, all right, this is what's happening. I got to just go at it, right? So, like, what's that look right. like? Uh, so I'm a data guy. Like I know my numbers. I know what are how, how things are performing on a monthly basis. And uh, with that being said, I'm not as I I didn't have that instant fear, right? Okay. You're like, okay, well, well, this is a this is a, just a shitty situation. We realize <laughs> that that's that's uh, that's not the best. This is not ideal for anyone. Let me get right. that straight. Um, but then your view comes down, okay, the marketing just has to perform. So let's figure out where people are going. The intent is still there. People's systems are still breaking down. They still need repairs. Uh, they may need a new system. There, there are folks that are still generating uh, their normal income through this. And, and you just have to really realize where, where people are going and, and what people are doing. And uh, last thing you need to do is stop spending on marketing. That's just a really bad idea. Yeah. Um, because you think business is bad now when you're marketing and you're, you're not getting some of the revenue, uh, that you expect, wait until you cut off the marketing too. Right. Um, what you can do is become smarter. You can, di you can really dive into your numbers and better understand them and, and know what is driving business, what is not, but also what, what is not driving business, but is influencing, uh, the other channels. So, um, uh, you know, being a data guy. I tend to lean towards digital because you can you can see the results more real time. The measurement of them are, are more successful. However, I'm also smart enough to know that top of mind awareness, our TV, our radio, um, all of this stuff we're doing on top of mind awareness, that also impacts your digital right. results because it's driving more branded searches, which is going to be your lowest cost per click and more SEO. And uh, there are things marketing is holistic right it's not just tactic by tactic um right you can you can view that when you're looking at the uh return on ad spend like i, I typically view things two ways return on ad spend and return on marketing spend ad spend is just platform uh you're just looking at what you spend on ppc what you get back from it while you spend on this program while you get back from it the return on marketing spends in, includes the professional fees, every, you know, freelancers, anything of that nature that you need to be able to make those things successful. That's right. when you add that in. When you're reviewing your ad spend, that's when the return on ad spend, that's when you actually see your success by, by campaign or by platform, however you want to do it, channel, whatever. And we can use all the different little buzzwords. Right. Cool. Um, but then you've got to make sure that you have that high level holistic view to be able to make sure, okay, hey, yeah, we we did this, but this digital will not be as successful without the top of mind awareness. Because I can tell you in Indianapolis where we've been doing TV and radio for years, and Cincinnati and Louisville where we've just been doing it for a couple of years, our, our digital performance and spend uh, performs much better than the other two markets at times because of that top of mind awareness and that investment we've made over time building the brand. So that's the exciting part because now we get to do it for two other you know, Cincinnati and Louisville, we're just starting there. So imagine what it's going to be once we, we get it to the same level as, as Indianapolis with Williams Comforter and Mr. Plummer. And, uh, yeah, that's a marketing. It, it's so cool, but don't stop marketing. Like don't stop marketing. There are so many people I heard like, oh, we've got to cut our spend. Let's cut marketing. Marketing's always the first one on the chopping block because we were like, Mar because pe most people think marketing is stupid. Um, but they, they fail to realize the, the impact it has on their business. And, right. and, um, just become smarter about your marketing, dive into that data, understand it. That's your job as, as a leader is to understand what's driving the business and just, just understand it. Um, make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people that are, that are, you know, the other professionals that, that are truly professionals of that subcategory, right. And, and make sure that they're, they're, um, you know, in it every day, they're being as educated as possible on it. Give them time to actually learn um, because it's going to pay dividends. But that, those are the type of things that you need to be doing in a situation like this. You shouldn't be cutting marketing. You should be understanding marketing and, and investing where it makes sense. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. I mean, I think that it shocks me how many people try to build themselves still as like a all-purpose marketer. And it's like, I don't know anything about right. pay per click, like hardly anything. And when people right. ask about ad spend, I'm like, I gotta, I'll have to tell you to talk to somebody else because I don't know. 
And right. if I was going to try to help you with that, I would just waste your money. <laughs> it's right. like I spend almost all of my time learning about and working on content. Like what does, right. how does content work? And people also, it's like, I hear a lot. It's like, you know, they're, they, they're, they always balk at how much it costs to like get started with content and nobody's doing it yet. Right. So it's like, but if you don't, right. cause they, they think like, well, I just want to start my, writing some blogs. And it's like, well, that's fine. But if you're just writing blogs, where's your like momentum coming from? Like, are you going to blog right. for four years before you start to get some traffic? Cause that's what it's going to take if that's all you're doing. And so it's like, right. no, you need to, you need to throw some LinkedIn in there. You need to throw in some email marketing. Like you need to start working at it all at right. one time. And that all right. kind of creates this momentum wheel. Right. And that's, yep. what's so funny. But you said like the, like the, even just the concept of like, if someone's typing in Williams comfort air into Google, instead of HVAC company, right. right. That ad is cheaper for you. So you right. able to think I'm looking for Williams comfort air. Right. Right. Well, dude, and, and look at this, like, what I love about it is if competition does jump, say, you know, COVID as an example, if competition, which I don't know if competition did jump out per se of PPC or lower their PPC spend, but for me to stay in it with less people playing, that means my cost per click is going down. So my advertising is actually getting cheaper. You know, you're able to negotiate better TV rates. You're able to negotiate better radio rates if some of the competi competition drops out. And that just allows you again, because you know your numbers, you're, you become more holistic in your view, more strategic in your view. Uh, now you're able to, to help take advantage of that and do more marketing and get more bang for your buck and, and, and really be able to grow the business um, you know, during a, a pandemic. Yeah. And, and that's, um, that's where it's just, it, you need someone it takes a business to a certain size, but like, like for me, I'm with you, dude. It makes zero sense for me to be in PPC every day. It makes zero sense of me writing content every day. What right. it does make sense is making sure that I'm, that I'm 100% focused on the strategy. Right. And right. where, what we're doing next, what are those next five things that we're going to be doing? Who's going to be doing them? How quickly, how can I get them done a month faster than I think it would take? Right. Um, and being able to constantly move things forward because marketing, again, it's holistic in its effect. It's strategy. Um, you got to have all these different moving parts working together because that's going to that's going to just, I mean, give you a much better result from a marketing spend perspective. Sure. Or return. So, you, so you've touched on a few of the you've touched on some of this kind of like uh what's what I'm looking for, uh, peripherally. Right. But like, right. let's, uh, we can wrap this up with this last question here. Yeah. What, um, what's working. So you've kind of touched on some of these, but like yeah. if, if you're in B2C right now and you're trying to figure out where should I be spending my money? Where should I be spending my time? What's working? Yeah. What are, what are good avenues? Yeah. So I, everything is, so this is going to be a weird way to answer this. Everything is working to a point. Um, you may have seen some drop off of performance here or there. Um, what really was impacted with all this is shared mail. So when you think of your Valpax money mailers, um, you know, Velasquez, all these different ones, uh, they highly, I mean, they're, they're so much of their um, business is focused around the restaurant industry. Okay. And with, and, and as me, I want as many restaurants in there as possible because that's really why people open these. They don't open them to say, oh, where's my HVAC contractor in the in okay. Valpac today? They're right. doing it uh, because I want to go to El Toro and I know for a fact there's going to be a coupon in there every month and I want to use it. And that that's that's really where I've seen an impact. Performance on some of them have stayed pretty strong. There are some that have been a little bit weaker and I think it's due to their, well, I know it's due to the, the, the target of theirs. Um, and and um, I would say that's probably, yeah, that's probably been the biggest, biggest impact, but everything to be quite honest has been working fairly well to expectation. Um, I would love for things to always be better. We're always driving to continually improve um, our results, but you know, year over year, our marketing is performing very well. I think June, uh, our return on marketing spend was double of what it was in 2019. Um, so it's, things are wow. performing well, as long as you're, again, focusing on that strategy, focusing on that big picture and, and making sure that it's all telling the same story because uh, yeah, I know that you wanted to be the last question, but I just want to give this no, tidbit I, no, 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 like, no. like story, know your story. Um, I've, I've been really thinking through this lately. 
Um, so many people, again, are so like, let's do this tactic, this tactic, this tactic, this tactic, but not thinking of how, how it blends in and, and how that story is told and, and really understand what your story is, identify it and figure out the best way to tell it. Uh, because that is going to be such a big differentiator for you. If you can tell people the story, because at the end of the day, um, when you think of, of, you know, advertising, what is it at the end of the day? It's feelings. It's how do you make, how do you make someone feel with the different things that you're putting out in market? And that's really where, where you need to really understand that, own it and go with it. Don't worry about what your competition is doing. Like people are always like, oh, look at what this competitor. No, it's just not part of our strategy. I'm not, I'm not concerned with that. We've got a winning strategy right here. Let's just do our best to implement this before we even start thinking about other things yeah. uh, that some of our competitors are doing. So just, just know your story. Yeah, it goes back to that know your role type deal. Like just know, know your purpose and right. go with it. Awesome, man. Well, Matt, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if anybody, uh, if anybody needs help with their HVAC, reach out to Williams Comfort Air. Usually I give we'll a plug here. to the guest, but you're not really offering services to somebody, right? Right, right. $100 <laughs> Maybe off any heating and cooling repair. <laughs> Maybe Matt's on Upwork, <laughs> freelance marketing right. director. Um, right. But uh, yeah, so thanks for coming on. Uh, good luck with everything you're doing. Um, if I have any issues once I own a house, because I rent right now, so... <laughs> Right. I'll be sure to, to give you a call, but, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming on awesome. again. Everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Awesome. Thanks.